We're privileged to have Patrick Riley, who's founder and CEO of ARC.com, a modern people search engine. Patrick built his first search engine while an undergraduate at Berkeley because he was tired of using AltaVista. How many of you remember AltaVista? <laughs> <laughs> to find out academic articles. During his PhD, he created a search platform that captures and indexes everything said on broadcast television in an effort to see how social media correlates to television. Patrick has published numerous computer science articles with IEEE and ACM, as well as having 10 years of industry expertise. And with that, I give you Patrick Riley. Thank you. So even before that, uh, I remember watching this movie, Space Odyssey 2001. And, um, and really, I was only fascinated by one thing, which was HAL 9000. Um, I'm sure a number of you also saw Kubrick's classic. If we remember uh, Space Odyssey 2001, uh, there was this monolith. And what it did, what it, it inspired human beings to kind of advance their knowledge. Um, the first opportunity for us to see the crystal monolith was a bunch of starving um, ancestors of ours in Africa. And the monolith inspired those people to kind of use tools and get out of their current, where they were stuck in, in technology. And you see it actually again later in the movie. It inspires us, it, we find it in space later, and then it inspires us to go further into space. And, um, and again, kind of encourage more knowledge and understand, a broader understanding of the universe. And in a way, um, I was so blown away when I saw Watson, which looked so similar to the monolith in Space Odyssey 2001. Watson, if you remember correctly, was the IBM computer that just crushed the, uh, the champions in Jeopardy. Um, this was the first like, few minutes of the show. And it is just, they, they can't even hit the buzzer quickly enough to, to actually beat Watson. Um, now what's interesting about Watson is it is very much, it has a lot of the aspects of how, in that it gives not just a page of, let's say, 10, 10 URLs, it's not a search engine uh, in the regards of Google, it's more that it gives one answer. And that's a really important aspect for us to remember um, in the future of search. Interestingly enough, Watson um, had to actually have some of its information deleted recently <laughs> because it learned how to cuss on um, Urban Dictionary and, um, and also uh, Wikipedia. Um, so it, there is an interesting aspect as to what you can actually feed a computer in terms of um, getting closer to HAL. So if you can imagine um, uh, HAL but also using some profanity, that was what actually happened to Watson after, after he absorbed other parts of the internet. So they have to be very careful about what parts of the internet they expose to HAL. Um, but it's still very indicative of what likely is going to be the future of search. Uh, later, what I think is probably the most um, profound contribution to NLP and search in the last 10 years has been Siri uh, from Apple. Um, if you think about it, it's not just the fact that it returns one answer, which is similar to how. It's no longer a page of 10 links uh, like Google. Um, but it also has kind of this, this personality, this persona, um, kind of similar to Hal, although Hal was a little bit more robotic. Um, and they did this with actually uh, a lot of specification. They wanted it to be um, uh, knowledgeable and uh, um, witty. You notice that it has a lot of um, what we call Easter eggs or delighters in, in Siri. Um, but uh, I wanted to read you a, a quote that they, the team, this is with the Siri, Siri team, uh, uh, talked about when they first created Siri. And she, she was supposed to be fresh, unexpected, entertaining, and engaging. She must constantly surprise and delight so that users become attached to her. So she's a personal assistant that you become absolutely dependent on. And in a way, we all need a personal assistant nowadays. We're all so busy, and the personal assistant will now take in a way, the form of a search engine for a lot of our queries, um, especially on the go. So this was, uh, this was, in a way, the first real consumer product that was getting closer to what really is, is the holy grail of search. It's what a lot of companies have been striving to get to. Interestingly enough, if you, um, if you ask Siri about, the, uh, about what 
Space Odyssey 2001 is, is about, um, it makes a very witty reply uh, suggesting that um, uh, it was two guys that, that uh, or it was about Hal who was trying to make contact with intelligent life, the computer, and two guys messed it all up, right? So almost taking the sympathy of the computer, um, they've built in this kind of attitude with Siri, um, which they really are very proud of and suggests likely what will also be um, uh, in the future of search. Now, Siri, a lot of people don't know this about Siri. A, um, it started in the 1960s. It was a DARPA project. Um, and, and it was actually done right here at SRI. It's actually just an additional I in a way. Um, it's Stanford Research Institute created the first, um, uh, in the 1960s, created some of the first work on Siri. And, um, and eventually, other companies tried to do the same functionality, including Apple. Um, back in 1987, John, um, uh, who took over uh, Steve Jobs' position, actually came up with, and you can look on the, if the fascinating video on YouTube is, you go to 1987, um, the uh, Knowledge Explorer. And the Knowledge Explorer is 25 years old, and it was essentially a personal assistant that you would talk to, give commands to, set appointments up, all these things. It was um, actually John's um, uh, push to try to do this at Apple. But obviously the device wasn't there yet. This is a very clumsy looking device. It would sit on the desk and, um, and so it would take some time before anyone would actually accomplish it. And that's what um, Dag and, and Adam did who created, um, uh, who created Siri. But they really just wanted to remove the friction out of what was search on a mobile device. Tapping and um, miscues and, um, and wanted, wanted to really, if you think about it, it has three steps. It understands what the speech inputs are um, it then kind of maps that request to uh, some kind of information, uh, whether it's an API that they're using or their own, and then it activates that, that, uh, that software agent. So in like a case like I'm looking up a restaurant around here, it might activate the Yelp um, uh, app or it might activate the calendar because it's adding something to it. So Siri, and this was the first logo actually before um, Apple acquired it, uh, had essentially the main ingredients there that came from the 1960s research. It's just that it was really polished and essentially it was the right time. It was now a device that could actually power up um, an engine like this where before it really re took a machine as large as Watson, which is not even that monolith thing in Jeopardy, it's actually a computer in um, IBM's headquarters. So essentially Siri is the 1.0 version of Watson in your in your per, or in your mobile phone, um, and that's actually just um, if you think about it, just the beginning of um, the revolution, which I think is the future of search. And that essentially is that it provides filtered results. It's no longer just ten links; it's filtered results. Um, it's it's no longer uh, um, well. The, the actual answers too are have been improving over the years. So when they actually put it into product it was getting 90% of the answers correct. It needs to actually get to 97. It's like, like there's, uh, there's psychological studies that say that people only trust something once it gets 97% of the answers correctly as a return. So it's almost there. You, you can kind of tell some people trust series answers, some people don't. And, um, but we are there. We have to remember that it's a 1.0 version and you know remember Windows 1.0. Um, now, the other parts that are future of search are, um, are proactive, uh, meaning that searches will be, will be done actually even without your requests. They're gonna come, they're gonna happen, and, um, uh, and then you're, you're gonna actually see it as a card or see it as an alert on your phone. So you didn't even ask for a search, but it gave you that information. It's gonna be contextual. That's the beauty of, obviously, the mobile phone, in that it knows your speed, it knows the temperature, it knows, uh, a number of, uh, or knows your position, it knows a number of factors that was not available in any other um, computer device. It's also going to be social, I meaning it's going to know who your friends are, where is home base for you, when are you traveling, what's home, what's work, those kinds of things. Um, if you think about it, there's some great examples of this, but I was trying to think of what companies really are, do, are really kind of own this space right now or are doing a lot of work in this. If you think about it proactive, Google's really good at this. Um, if you think about it, if I just search for an airline flight, 
it's, uh, or if I just say United uh, 1593, it's already shown, it already knows what I want, right? It already actually predicted that one answer on the top of the search results. It's still offered links below, but they're trying to get to that kind of proactive. And this will show up now um, in your mobile phone even without you asking for it, in some cases with the integration with Gmail. Um, contextual, well, if you think about it, there's only two companies really that have any real uh, penetration in the mobile market, which is Android and iOS. So they essentially own that layer. And one could say that you could always build on top of it, but really they, they have full access to the hardware, meaning that they can do pretty much anything that they want. And then social, I, I used to actually only have Facebook here, um, but actually when I think about it, Google, even though they don't like to admit it, they, they do know a lot of, um, of social information, simply if you use Gmail or other things that are telling Google over time who you are, and that will, that will personalize that personal assistant that you might use. So if we look at an example of, of search as being proactive, um, one example might be, and I mentioned this before, um, uh, let's, let's go right to the United, uh, 1593, it, this was the search query that I ran just recently, and it showed me on the very top um, automatically uh, that it knew it was a flight. This happens, again, if, if I had ha talked about this in Gmail, it shows it as a card in, um, in my mobile phone, which is pretty nice. Um, just to show you how far that's actually gone, Yahoo still doesn't do that. So I did the same query United 1593, and it has no idea that I'm talking about a flight. It's really just still returning 10 links. Do you see the difference between those two results? It's pretty significant. And what that does is it suggests to you kind of one of the steps that we're going towards through this personal assistant. It's actually not a very good example, but uh, there's much, much more advanced examples in Google Now and some of the other products that they, they've built. Um, my uh, PhD dissertation was on, uh, essentially I wrote this, um, this server which uh, it, it indexed all of what was said on television and users were, um, in this example, they were watching NCAA and it was doing predictive searches. So it was pulling out names that would be mentioned on television and doing those searches automatically. Uh, so if the announcer was talking about this player, it would show a bio and it would do all these things without the user having to type in that name. Um, and what we found actually back in 2008 was this was really interesting to people there was this whole second screen experience to television. In a way, that will become part of the, pers the personal res assistance responsibility, meaning it will know that you're now watching television and will want to do proactive searching. We haven't really seen anything like this um, except for uh, a few things that will be coming out in the future from Yahoo, which should be interesting. And uh, the second thing is the future search is contextual. I talked a little bit about this in terms of uh, what the device knows about you. Um, in this case, then, uh, a mobile phone knows where you are, what the weather is likely going to be like, where you are, and in this case, obviously, your name. So the response quickly, you know, took this input of, well, I need an umbrella, and, and Siri answered, knowing that they were asking about weather, no rain in sight. Um, other great examples in, um, in Google include kind of looking at it constantly uh, changes the, uh, the ETA uh, based on traffic. And again, this is contextual based on where you are, where it knows you're likely going, having learned uh, throughout uh, many, many weeks what your typical routes are. And then lastly, and I think this is probably the more controversial right now, especially considering um, new releases from Facebook, is the future of search will definitely have to use some social aspects to it. Um, and most recently, uh, Facebook did announce their graph search, which has kind of been long overdue. Uh, Facebook has been very difficult at searching through anything. Um, but it's really just one aspect of it. Uh, if you think about it, um, there's been other times where you, what you want to do is actually pull out things that are from aspects of your email or um, uh, flight information, packaging information that are owned by other companies um, or that are, uh, uh, came through messages through those, those places. And bubbling that up automatically into the mobile phone um, uh, is a great example of what it will be like 
uh, with the social aspects um, uh, also in engaged there. So just to kind of reiterate those three points, um, and you know, think about this again in kind of what Hal was uh, in the movie. He was proactive. He would predict uh, essentially if there was an, something was going to fail in 48 hours, right? He was proactive. He was contextually. He knew everything of where they were in the galaxy or um, uh, where everyone was located in the ship. And, um, and that was an important aspect to all of his decisions. The same is true for kind of your future search engine. It will know those things. It will know uh, uh, if you're headed towards traffic or um, uh, if there's weather coming that they should warn you about. The, I think the main aspect that someone's going to have to do here is they have to know when to not tell you something, right? So the, the real innovation here is kind of, and uh, Marissa Meyer said this about Yahoo, the future of search is really about the interface and, and basically making sure that it gives you the information that you want, but not too much, because then you're just ignoring the phone and any kind of notifications that come with it. And then lastly, social. So using your social, your, uh, social graph, using um, what is part of just you, uh, making a personal index that is you. It is your flights, your packages coming in, and um, uh, your friends. Those kinds of things will be more integrated into uh, the modern search engine. And I wanted, to, um, I wanted to end with a quote that Hal said, because to me it's, it's very suggestive of where Siri was going before Apple acquired it. They did that, a lot of that before Apple, uh, Apple bought it, even though you'd think some of those cutesy uh, messages from Siri would be something Apple would do. They always tried to make it feel like it had a conscience, that it had um, an attitude, uh, that it was entertaining, and it was someone that you wanted to... To, that you like as a personal assistant. So Hal said uh, um, when he was basically uh, not doing one of the commands that, um, uh, that Dave was asking him to do, he said, I'm putting myself to the fullest possible use, which is all I can think that any conscious entity would ever hope to do. And, and in a way, that is what your mobile phone will, and I, I promise you, in two or three years do. It will um, have this idea of, um, thank you, it will have this idea of uh, what its, its full extent is and using those three aspects, being proactive, um, using all of its information that it gets from its locale, and using your social information. And that's it. Thank you.